Welcome to Tech 20 Tuesday, everyone. Uh, today's session is on great book at the high school level, and I'll let Jeff Holder start. Great. Uh, thanks, Mark. Yes, uh, just a reminder, um, like Mark said, that uh, this session is for grade book uh, grade 9 to 12. So if anybody is online who is a K-8 to teacher, um, just remember that the functions that we're going to go over today are uh, strictly for the high school environment. Um, if you're in the K-8 to environment, there would be a, an archive video on uh, Tech Tuesday uh, uh, website uh, that you can view that Mary Jo did uh, last week. So if you want to review that, as if you're a K-8 to teacher, um, you can certainly do that. So today we're going to focus on uh, grade book 9 through 12. And uh, just uh, as you see on the screen right now, um, Power Teacher uh, is, is in front of you. Of course, that's the, the jumping off point for most of us for, for Gradebook. Uh, some of us do have um, the Gradebook. Some of us do have the Gradebook um, uh, uh, shortcut on our desktop as well. But uh, uh, if not, then you can certainly launch um, from here. So I'm going to open Gradebook and go right into that, and, uh, and we'll start. So you'll notice that uh, I have Gradebook open, and uh, you can see up in the upper uh, left-hand corner under classes, you can see the current classes that I, as a teacher, have been, uh, been assigned. Um, so I have a Science 9, uh, physical Geography 11.0 in my in my home room. You can also see the student groups and the categories down below. So that's the the general data down the side, and you'll also see. Pardon me one second. Okay, sorry about that. So. Um, Excuse me. So along the, the top menu bar here, we've got our score sheet, assignments, uh, student info, grade setup, class content, and reports. And we're just going to briefly touch on those uh, as we go as we go along today, um, because I'd like to get into uh, want to make sure we get into the final grade, how the final grade will populate, uh, how you'll put comments in, and uh, and the basic functions there as well. But uh, so we'll start. Just beginning with the category function here, uh, as a teacher in high school, you can certainly organize your categories um, that you would be putting in your assignments um, via. So you'll see that I have exam, homework, project, quiz, and test. Uh, I certainly can add uh, more to those by clicking on the plus button and creating a new category if I'd like to do that. And I can give it a color, an abbreviation, and so on. Oops. Cancel. And... Uh, if you click on these particular categories, of course, if you have assignments along the assignment tab up here, then they will appear because it's all color coded by a, you can also filter by a selected type of assignment if you'd like as well. So again, you can create those different categories as well if you prefer. And as we move along the top, of course, the score sheet tab is the main tab that you'll see. This is where your students will be listed, and there's a couple of ways that you can uh, you can get some information on here. So you can see that in this training data, I have 23 students in my room. If I wanted to call the parent of, uh, of this child here, I would just click on the side arrow, and it brings up their their demographics page or their basic demographic information, which would be their contact phone number, date of birth, and when Harvey Studios or whatever photographer you use, the photos are updated, that will be there as well. Um, another interesting piece to this, just to keep uh, in mind, is that you'll see along this tab is one called Teacher Personal Notes. This is where you can keep some anecdotal comments um, on any student or on any student on this particular <laughs> On this particular student uh, in your class, so you can you can put in different notes here and so on. Um, you see me writing in. Just click the save button, and of course you can keep sort of an anecdotal uh, running uh, running items that you might want to include uh, in parent teacher conferences or those kind of things if you have them. So that's part of the student information piece. And again, just by clicking on the side arrow next to the name, bringing up that. 
And of course, if you need to use the phone, the phone number will come up and so on. So, and the student email address is there as well if you need the student email um, too. So you'll also notice that there are some final grades in here. We're going to talk about that in a second and how that populates and where that comes from. But I will uh, I'll move on just quickly to um, to the student info tab very quickly. This is a, a tab that uh, teachers can make very good use of in the high school level. It uh, it certainly has pre-populated data, so you'll see student names, student numbers, birthdays, and so on. And that data can't be changed. At the, at the level of the classroom. The administration is the only way, only place that can be changed. However, you can move these columns around and create sort of customized looks for your room. So for example, you'll see that I have a student named column here, which is the legal name. And then you'll see the preferred name down here, the preferred name that the student has. But really, I probably don't need the student number. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna drag that down to the end. And maybe, I don't need to worry about this, and I don't need to worry about the grade level. And you can cr sort of start creating something that works for you because you can edit these custom columns and maybe create one that's for lockers and create one that's for textbook numbers and so on and so forth. And to do that, um, all you do is create, uh, click on this button called Extra Class Columns. Change the data here, and you'll see there are five custom ones already pre-populated, but you can create as many as you'd like. So I just click on this one, edit, click on tech, type in textbook number, and click OK. And you'll see the textbook number now appears here as one of the columns. I'm gonna move that over closer to the student name because it's one of those things I wanna have close. The other thing, maybe I wanna create another custom column, and I wanna call that, uh, SRC fees, and click OK, close, and maybe I want that in the month of September so as I'm collecting, collecting my student council fees, and I can just type in yes, and, or paid, or something along that line. It's just a data fillable um, uh, column that you can have. So that's, um, that's how you can set up your class columns and extra class columns and sort of create that student info um, section that really works with you. One of the key things that happens um, is, and it's very, very important, when you see the student name, of course, the student name column, that's the legal name of the student um, that's entered into, uh, entered into the system. Of course, a lot of students have preferred names. They go by different names and so on. So over here in the preferred column, and I'm just going to move this over so it's easier to see. So in the preferred column, if you select a preferred name for a student, so for example, Braden here, maybe they go by Bray, and so on, and maybe the student goes by Kim, and so on, you can create this. And what can happen is that you can actually print reports from this report menu here um, with their preferred name, but there's a setting that you must change in order for this to happen. Because one of the questions that we get asked a lot is, I've created my preferred names down the side, but when I go to print off reports, they don't show. And the reason for that is that there's a setting you just need to change, and I'm gonna show you that. It's under Tools, and you click on Preferences. And one of the tabs is a Student tab. And you click on the Student tab, and you'll see where it says Student Name Display. And make sure that the, these boxes will most likely be unchecked for you. Make sure you check Use Preferred Name when available, and Use Preferred Name on Reports. And then click OK. And that means that when you run reports for your students, um, then it will run with the preferred name. So this is, would be especially important for those who, um, who have A, preferred names, and B, if you have a large number of international students who are using a different name, um, then this is where that would re those reports or that uh, column would come in handy. So just a reminder to go to Tools, Preferences, and Student tab, okay? And that's where you'd make sure that those are checked. Use preferred name when available. The other thing I'd like to touch on is uh, is on grade setup. Now, for you'll notice right now in my setting, I'm I'm in uh, quarter one um, of the of the school year, and that's exactly where we are at the moment. 
um, for us. So if you look here, um, are my reporting term says quarter one. I'm in quarter one here. And what I'd like to do is make sure I get into grade setup. Now, for some people, this can be look rather complicated. But the basic thing you need to remember is, how do I want to weight my, my sections of my course? My exam, my homework, my project, my quiz, my test, and whatever other categories you've created down the side. And how do you want those to appear? So when you do that, you actually click on quarter one, weighting, and you'll see where the options are total points, term weights, and category weights. The vast majority of people in the high school level will weight by category weights. Um, so what you do is just create, by clicking on this bullet, create the category weights column, and it says, what categories do you want to add to this? So you click the plus button, and you say, okay, well, my categories for, for uh, quarter one are going to be uh, exam, homework, project, quiz. I'll just go with four. Uh, maybe with no project, I'll go with test, and click OK. So you'll notice that we have four of them. Now, just to make it easy, I'm going to create them all even. You can certainly put in what you need, and you'll notice that now this, these are all weighted equally. So if I click Save, which is very important, then my categories are now saved. I can do one of two things. I can actually, see where it says, I can now do that for semester one because I may want that in, I may want that exact same setup in my other semesters or my other quarters as well. Why well, do it twice? So what you can do is just right click on the quarter and where it says copy grade setup, you just click on that. And it says, where do you want to copy that to? Well, I want it for everything. And I'm going to click next and it says finish. So now, if I go into my semester one, you'll see that the setup is exactly the same. If I go into my quarter one and my quarter two, the setup is exactly the same. So I only had to do it once. And you can copy that uh, easily just by right-clicking on here. Now, some questions have come up regarding what's the, what are the um, requirements to use Gradebook to populate the final grade. Well, you can see that in the test sample that I've put up here at the moment, there's only one item in the assignments. So the basic minimum requirement for the reporting period is that a final grade is entered in this final grade column that you see. So there are some teachers, and, and most teachers, and again, this will be a school-based decision, that will use the electronic grade book, and they'll put in their assignments, and of course, that will populate the grade for them. For those who choose to just enter a grade, then I'm going to show you that way as well. So I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. The first way is just simply entering a final grade. So it's come down to the day that you need to submit your grades to the office, and you're sitting down to put in your, your final grades. So what you will do is you select your class from the side, make sure you're in the right quarter, and this part here, I'm going to just delete this assignment so it shows blank for the moment. There you go. So we'll click on final grades here. We just open this up. We right click and go show score inspector. And I'm just going to move this over to the side so we can sort of view it. And what you'll do, this is just for entering grades on your own. So you're, you're going to take from maybe a paper grade book or something along that side and you're going to put the grades in. So you'll see it's a student, Rennie Atwood, right here, reporting term Q1, so you know you where you are. And what you want to do is click on Manual Override and put in the grade. So we'll say 75%. And you then will want to click on the comment box here. And this comment box will open up, and it will have Show Comments. You'll have two options here. There will be a district comment bank and there will also be a school comment bank. So each teacher will be able to select two codes, as you would have in the, in the old Win school system, and those codes will populate the, uh, the comments. So you'll be able to scroll through the comments and pick the one that's appropriate. So I'm going to click this one and go Insert Selected. And it's the only one available at the moment. And I'm just going to close this for a second so you can see how this works. And you'll notice 
that I know it's probably hard to see on the screen, but not only does it say that I'm in quarter one, I've got 75% for the student, but there's a little blue C right there, and I can see that really easily on my screen, but in that, that just indicates that a comment has been put in for that student. So you know that the not only is the grade put in, but the comment is put in as well. So again, I can right click, show inspector, and I can do this for all of my students at the same time. I don't have to click on each one as we go because all I have to do to click from Rennie Atwood to the next student is click the down arrow. And I just keep moving down through the students, entering their grades, and so on until the bottom. Each time, entering the manual override, putting the grade in, and selecting the comments that, uh, that are appropriate. Okay, so next would be if you're putting in assignments, of course, then you're going to create your assignments using the Assignment Plus button here on the Score Sheet tab. You will click on the Plus button. You would put in things like Test 1 or whatever the names are and so on. You select the appropriate category. You would put in the points that you would have on the test, up of 50, um, and then you click Save. And these would start appearing. So as you create more and more assignments, projects, maybe homework, and so on, and I'll create that under the homework category. It's worth five, and so on. So you can create these, of course, as you go, and then you can put the marks in, and then, of course, what will happen is as you put your grades in, then it will continue to populate the, um, the grading for you. So this is, this is uh, the method of using sort of the assignments to grade for you, and your... Um, Sorry, you're, you will also notice that the, the assignments are color-coded based on the coloring over here. So homework is blue and so on, because I can now filter. If I want to just look at what tests I've done this particular quarter, I can go filter selected, click on tests, and everything but tests disappear, or quizzes if there were any, or projects, or homework, and so on. So I can see what uh, level... Um, uh, what number of uh, assessments I've done on each one of those as well. One of the other things, too, is that if you're meeting with a parent during parent-teacher interviews and you wanted to show them how their child is doing, um, but you certainly don't want to show them how the other students are doing in the class, is to click on the student view. And if I click on the student view, then you'll see Rennie Atwood, and of course the running list of assignments would be here, the scores would be here as they're, as they're put in and so on. So you would be actually able to, to address just that particular student with the parent. And you would be able to see their most recent score or most recent grade, and so on and so on and so on. So that's a, the student view is, a, is quite an important tab as well. Now, I know I've only got a couple of minutes left, um, but I just wanted to touch on a couple more things before, uh, before we go, and that is that uh, uh, for your notification piece over on the side, you'll notice that I have quite a number of notifications, 21 in fact. The notifications will let you know birthdays in your room, added and dropped students, and this login feature here will let you know if an administrator has been uh, logged into your grade book. Um, remember that uh, administrators, the so principals and vice principals, do have the ability to log into Gradebook uh, and view data on students, but not to change any data on, uh, on students. The other thing that I would want to address, too, is the attendance icon. Um, we have had uh, people uh, request information on why the attendance icon uh, is not working or not functioning. Um, that all depends on whether you've got Power Teacher open in the background. Remember that Power Teacher is how you take attendance, not through Gradebook. Um, the link here is just linking you back into um, Power Teacher. So if you click on this and you get an error, most likely you're not logged into Power Teacher. So the easiest thing to remember is to make sure that you're logged into Power Teacher before you click on this icon or log into Power Teacher and take attendance before you open your gradebook, whichever one you prefer. And very last before I go on this very brief uh, summary of Power Teacher gradebook is just to look at the reports function um, and to note that uh, 
Um, there are a number of things you can print off from attendance grids down to student rosters. Some of the some of the um, uh, items are uh, able to be comma separated values. You can export them out to Excel uh, and manipulate them. Uh, as you need to from there. You can even add columns and so on. So there are many things that you can do there. I encourage you to take a look. And one thing that I will show you, which I think is extremely valuable to, to teachers, is if you click on this help button right here, what every teacher should know. And if I click on what every teacher should know, it lists the top items here. I mean, there are many items over on the side. But this is a list of the top features in Gradebook that every teacher should know when using it. So I encourage you to click on that uh, um, to click on that help button and go to that link and take a look at that because it tells you how to do different reports uh, and how to work basically within the in the confines of the system. So just a reminder that um, uh, we do have information on uh, Data Connect as well, and we will be hosting. Uh, uh, virtual sessions on October the 9th, uh, and we have more information will come out about that as well. So I encourage you and your staff to uh, to uh, take part in those. And if you have any other questions, please uh, certainly make use of the help desk, and we will answer them as quick as possible. So I hope this has been valuable, and thank you very much.